Hey everyone, it's me, Michael Anthony Judasusi. I figured I'd just do this live and have YouTube record it rather than record it and edit it and upload it and wait and all those things. So, <laughs> so I'm here. Uh, so, what are we here for? Two videos in one day? Well, yes, because you all have done such a great job of debunking these Billy photos that get sent to me. I wanted to update you on them so I could share what I've learned from essentially from all of you. Uh, over the past 24 hours. Um, I do want to go on record as saying I don't look for these photos. I'm not going out and, uh, you know, trying to find Billy or photos that could be Billy the Kid and then uh, present them to you and then hope somebody, you know, confirms them. These get sent to me. Please don't stop sending them. I think it's great. Um, only through the search, uh, you know, for more photos are we likely ever to find anything. Um, but two photos that we looked at yesterday, Dancing Billy and Texas Ranger Billy, uh, have been uh, thoroughly debunked as being Billy the Kid within 24 hours by you, our loyal viewers. So let's uh, let's take a look and see what we learned. All right. So uh, this is Dancing Billy, and uh, we... You remember uh, Dancing Billy and O'Folliard, uh, and uh, we, we talked about that, that, you know, obviously very unlikely. Sure, the guy looks a little bit like Billy the Kid. He's got the ears, the, the eyes, the scrunched up face, the round chin, et cetera. But uh, the thing that's uh, missing here is that if that were Folliard, he'd have to be half a foot taller. And we only got the picture up through here, right? We got this young lady's derriere. But this young lady is a man, very shapely, though. Uh, you know, if you think about it, got the nice <laughs> curve. Uh, so this is the entire uh, photograph. And uh, it reads, I know it's not great, but it's cowboy stag dance. Uh, uh, inscription in the negative reads, number 28, cowboy dance stag postmarked, winter South Dakota, October 20th, don't have a year. So apparently this used to be a, a, a pretty... Um, gosh, I don't know, a, a pretty common occurrence. There were not a lot of women out on the frontier or on the plains. And so these guys wanted to dance. And so they would dance with each other. Seems weird in our modern day setting. I mean, not for men to be dancing together, but for straight men to be dancing together. Yeah, seems a little weird, but um, yeah, but I guess this was kind of a common deal. So uh, it, clearly uh, taken in South Dakota, where we have zero evidence Billy ever was. <clears throat> we don't know the year, but circa 1910. So if that's correct, then of course, that's uh, well after Billy was killed or not. And clearly, if you think this is Billy, well, I, I probably could have been, but you know, a foliar six inches shorter. And if it were 1910, well, Pat Garrett would already be dead. And fiddling from the grave is, uh, is a tough thing to do. So I think we can, uh, take this picture forever out of our <laughs> our uh, uh, bag of potentials, uh, this photo does not represent Billy the Kid. All right. So uh, with that said, we uh, let's come back here. Yeah. And the reason for the quick live again is uh, I just didn't feel like recording and editing and uploading and you know sitting by and doing all that. So this is a quicker and easier way. All right. So the other photo that we looked at, in the last 24 hours, which, you know, some people thought, hey, you never, never know, uh, could be, was this photo of what we call Texas Ranger Billy. And uh, you remember this one? It's got a number of uh, different Texas Rangers. And then it's said at the end, Billy, B-I-L-L-E-Y, somebody pointed out, Billy the Kid. And even in the inscription in the bottom or the uh, notation includes notorious Billy the Kid notorious. Uh, this uh, photo was said to have been taken during the 1870s. And we talked about the, the challenge of that, that, you know, Billy, you know, where he would get together and be on the side of the law of the Texas Rangers would be tough. But there is a visual clue in here that JTR, James, the research, researcher, was able to pick out uh, right away. And that's why I love experts. Uh, because you can find things quickly that can disqualify a picture. And I can tell you, this is not Billy the Kid, if you believed it could have been. 
uh, which was pretty far-fetched to begin with. But James, the researcher, Mr. JTR, uh, called our attention to this rifle by, uh, let me get the notes here just so I can tell you. Uh, da, 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 oh, uh, uh, Jim Glenn. So this is Jim Glenn right here, Texas Ranger. Everything looks copacetic. Uh, if you look at the rifle he's carrying, there's a dead giveaway there, which I would not have known. Uh, but uh, certainly James, the researcher, JTR knew. And this is a Colt Lightning. Colt Lightning rifle. I have a picture of that so you can see it. Colt Lightning rifle is a slide or pump action. Hey, Brian. Uh, slide or pump action rifle. And first manufactured in 1884. And that's why, again, with experts, I am no expert in photo authentication or firearms, but you can see this Colt Lightning, I think this one's a replica, has a slide action, not the uh, the lever, the cocking lever that you would uh, see on the 1873 Winchester. And you can see that right here on this rifle. Dead giveaway that this photo was not taken in the 1870s, but was taken 1884 or later. And so, uh, aside from all of the other things that would make this very unlikely to be Billy the Kid, while he was an outlaw with, you know, uh, seven, uh, let's see, six, seven different Texas Rangers, and they took this kid in. It doesn't really look like Billy the Kid. He looks way more stocky than Billy the Kid did. Aside from everything else, we can absolutely and positively say that this photo was taken 1884 or later because of the firearm that's been identified by JTR. So both photos debunked by you, our loyal viewers, in less than 24 hours so where yes a surprise is a live event mark just uh just out of convenience uh, to save kind of the uh uh the uh editing and uploading so uh both photos we looked at yesterday not billy um but cool photographs does that mean you should stop sending them in no absolutely not i can't get to them all but i get to the ones that i can and, uh, and when I, when I put them up, like we did yesterday and we talk about them, people who are way, way more knowledgeable than me, look at them and go, Oh no, that's this, or that's that, or that's that. And sometimes nobody comes up with anything. They just come up with opinion. And if nobody can disqualify the photo, that's one that we can take a little bit further. We can look, uh, more deeply at and, uh, Hey, Dan AZ, howdy, uh, that we can look more closely at and make a determination. Somebody asked me today, they sent me a Twitter message and they said, hey, Michael, are there any other legit Billy photos other than the tin type? And uh, we talked a little bit about the croquet photo and, you know, some of the some of the pros and cons of that. But aside from that, my answer was, yeah, I think there are. I do think there are other photos of Billy the Kid, but I think at this point, 140 some odd years later, there will we are not going to find one with provenance that will be enough to satisfy any expert. And so, well, I'm certain there are there's one or five or whatever. Uh, I the the challenge is going to be you'll never actually prove it. You're going to have to decide for yourself. Now, with photos like this, like we just uh, showed, let me show it again. With photos like this. If you want it to be Billy the Kid, it, you can make it Billy the Kid, except it's not. It's We know it's not Billy the Kid because of when this photo was taken, because of the identification of the firearm there. But there are photos that you cannot disqualify because of very obvious things like clothing or firearms or locations that didn't exist, you know, a building that wasn't there. Uh, and so those are the ones that you're just going to have to decide for yourself. And there's, you know, the, whatever it's going to be is, you know, it's going to be for you. Okay. If you think this is Billy the Kid and he made his way to South Dakota, 1910-ish, well then, okay. But uh, it's, it's, you know, almost definitely not. Hi, Betty. Thanks for joining me. So are there other photos out there? Yes, I'm certain there are. 
Uh, are we going to get them, have the provenance that absolutely proves their ability to kid? No, I don't think so. I don't think it, that's ever going to happen. We're, we're way too far past that in order for that to occur. So, uh, but keep finding them, keep sending them in. Let's keep discussing them because one of these days, it might be a week from now or three years from now or something, one of these days we're going to come across one and we're not going to be able to exclude it. We're not, there's not going to be enough there to just take it and go, oh, no, because of this, it's out. And then the real research and study is going to start. And we might get close enough to make a really good educated guess that by golly, that's Billy the Kid. Uh, that's correct. Betty says, so essentially these two photos are not of Billy. Absolutely not. They're not Betty. We looked at him yesterday. People sent them in and thought they were. And within 24 hours, we proved that they weren't. Okay, I wanted to make this one short and sweet, but a um, couple things. If you haven't, there's a new episode up where we're kind of uh, unmasking the Windy K-hole. K-hole, <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> the Windy K-hill uh, uh, tombstone and see if you can figure out what that inscription is. I got some good advice to take some like tracing paper and a lead pencil and uh, go over it to see if it'll bring forth what the inscription is because it's almost impossible to read but we're trying to see what's on that tombstone. And that was posted a few hours ago and a big announcement, which will echo on the Monday show. Uh, I can uh, verify that David Thomas author, David Thomas of actually I have his books. Uh, I'm going to get one of them from here. <laughs> and the, I use books uh, to get my computer to the right height. So, but David Thomas wrote Billy, the kid's grave, Pat Garrett, um, uh, uh, a, a great book on Pat Garrett, uh, Bill, uh, The Trial of Billy the Kid. Um, so, uh, I mean, you know, David Thomas is a guy who researches until there's nothing left to research. And he is going to be joining us at Billy Palooza next year, late September 2023, is one of our featured guest speakers. You're going to get to talk to him about Billy's trial about his life, about Pat Garrett, um, about his uh, very famous gravestone and grave in Fort Sumner, New Mexico. And uh, so David Thomas joining the roster of Billy Palooza as it starts to fill out. Tour guide Brandon Dixon. Uh, I'll be there. I mean, I guess I have to be. I'm the one that's putting it together. Uh, lots of great uh, musicians from our group. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll welcome David Thomas in and looking forward to that. Also, David Thomas has written a stage play called The Trial of Billy the Kid, and it is an accurate and faithful recre recreation of Billy's trial in Mesilla, New Mexico. Uh, they did it in Rodeo, New Mexico about a month ago, and I was not able to get there, but they have, uh, they have booked it to uh, play again at Shefflin Hall, which is in Tombstone, Arizona in November, and I will be there filming it. And we're going to bring it to you right here. We're going to, you're going to get to see the whole trial. And the only difference between the actual trial and testimony and the actors that portray them and David's trial is in David's trial, Billy the Kid gets to testify in his own defense, which never happened during Billy's real trial in 1881. He did not testify. That may have been a huge mistake or it may have not mattered at all. But in this one, Billy does take the stand in his own defense, which I think is uh, like a really cool, unique uh, way to go about this. So I'll answer a few more questions here and let you uh, uh, go back. A uh, got it made says the pick may not be legit, but I did find some back to Billy books in Old Messia yesterday. Well, thanks. Got it made. Um, oh, that's Fred. <laughs> Sorry, Fred. I get confused. Yeah, that uh, the uh, the uh, old. Uh, gift shop there has some of the back to billy books so i hope you uh hope you enjoyed your trip there fred um the uh the j l mills well anyway j mills do you think that new tech might be able to prove it in years to come i'm not sure what you're asking to prove prove what happened to billy did he die did he not prove the photographs i don't know if the photographs can be proven by technology um because we still need provenance but can we figure out what happened to Billy? Oh, that's being figured out as we speak. Yeah, it is. And, uh, and modern technology plays a big, big, big part in that. Um, do, do, do. Betty says, I think everyone would like Billy to have survived, even though he didn't. 
Well, two things, Betty, I agree with you. I don't think he did survive. I think that the chances are ultra slim. Um, and I, I think that a lot of people would have liked, they had good feelings about Billy and, and they, 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 they see that he got a broad deal and, and he really did. I mean, there've been times where I've wavered and said, no, you know what? He killed people. There's, you know, it's kind of an unforgivable sin, but he really did get a raw deal just kind of in life from when his mother died and on forward. And I would have been much happier if Billy had, you know, retired to a ranch somewhere in the high country in Colorado or gone to Mexico or Bolivia or England or somewhere else and just lived a quiet life and enjoyed life the way he probably didn't have the chance to all of those, uh, all of those times. Um, Betty also says th she thinks his death was based on a government cover up over Lincoln, New Mexico. I'd love to hear more about that, Betty. Leave me a comment and explain. Um, that would be great. Uh, Jay Mills asks about photos. Yeah, you know, th there's the photo comparison stuff, right? Like uh, we're going to compare this photo to this photo with this computer program. I guess they can do that. I don't know that you can ever get a complete match. And of course, you're at the mercy of really bad photographs, like historically bad photographs, just because of the age of them and the technology. And so maybe, I mean, I'm not a technology whiz, maybe someday they might be able to, but a 2D photograph, I don't know that technology will ever be able to say, absolutely, this person is this person, because a lot of people look alike. Um, Bill Landers says, uh, oh, okay, wait, the horseman, cool name. I want to talk to you about the first and known picture standing with the rifle. Well, horseman, uh, email me, Billy the Kid Rides again at gmail.com or find me on Twitter at BTK Rides, and we'll talk about that for sure. Um, Bill says, I just watched the Chano, it's Chano Silva interview again. Any thoughts or have you commented on it already? I have watched Chano Silva's um, episode uh, or uh, interview. I think it's in two parts on YouTube. Uh, I think Chano uh, was a great guy, great, uh, you know, kind of asset to the history of Billy the Kid. I think a lot of things that he said were just made up fable and legend, you know, Billy posing as a girl and serving the posse. So that's when it's hard. You have guys like Charlie Seringo, Paco Anaya, um, you, who were the same, really wildly inconsistent in their recollections. So, you know, some of it is true because they were there. And with Chano, his father was there but you just don't know how much of it is true. Some of it you can easily dismiss and go, well, that's just silly. That clearly didn't happen. But how much do you dismiss? So uh, I, I would have loved to have been able to sit and speak to Chano, but uh, you know, he's, he's gone uh, on now to the next, uh, <laughs> the next stage of whatever comes next. Uh, but he was the final burial in the uh, Fort Sumner cemetery and there had to be a court order because that cemetery was full up he was the last person uh to be allowed to be buried there uh okay uh da -da, the horseman says uh i believe it shows him with a quick draw rig that's left-handed with a shorter barrel well could be except that it's pretty well proven that that tin type needs to be flipped because the loading gate on that rifle would not be on the left side and so uh, that means he was a right-hander. I mean, that, that would just put the, you know, the, the pistol on his right hip. But again, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, Betty says, the governor, lawyers, and town officials were corrupt. That's for sure. Uh, that's what Lincoln War was about based on Gail Cooper's book. That's for sure. The governor wanted him dead. Billy was fighting the system. Uh, the only thing I disagree with Betty is the, I don't know that the governor wanted him dead, but did nothing to save him. Uh, I, I don't think, I don't think Billy was freedom fighting or fighting for, you know, the, the oppressed. Uh, I think Billy was living kind of an unspectacular life, stealing some horses and cattle here and there, gambling to stay alive, you know, just kind of going at the women whimsy of a 20 year old or 21 year old boy. And he just got caught up in something because he was unfortunately one of uh, two people that were, uh, or I, I guess he was the one that was actually tried for the killing of Sheriff Brady. Uh, I do ag agree that he was treated completely unfairly, especially by Lou Wallace. Uh, but I, I just, I don't personally see him fighting for oppression and standing up against the Santa Fe ring. I see him just trying to survive 
um, which in some ways is kind of even sadder because, you know, he's just a kid and all he really wants to do is have some sort of life and, and he just couldn't escape his own troubles. So there you go. Um, da, da, da. Thank you, Arizona Ghost Riders. I appreciate all the research you do on the subject. I appreciate all the researchers that help me because they do way more than I do and they, uh, they help. The horseman disagrees with me, so that's okay. We can disagree and still be friends. Mr. 1000, you're here. Welcome. Um, da, da, da. so the horseman says, uh, was that style rifle sold and delivered to New Mexico territory around that time at the left side, uh, with the left time you're asking me the question is, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, that's, that's been the, uh, the opinion of historians and, uh, firearms experts, uh, since 1954, when they discovered that the tin type, uh, was never properly reversed, but, It'll be uh, whatever you want. They bought a special order rifle. Hey, maybe so. You'd have to prove of that in order to change people's minds, though, horsemen. And that would be a big challenge. But if you ordered a special order rifle, there should be a record of it. There can't be that many left side loading gate rifles that were made and shipped to New Mexico territory. So maybe a record's out there. That could be that would be a significant find. That would be an absolute that, wow, maybe this picture had already been flipped around, although we know it's not. Bill Koch has the original tin type, and the original tin type is unreversed. It shows pistol on the left hip, hand on the uh, right hand on the, the uh, barrel of the rifle, and, and tin types must be reversed to be shown correctly. So, I mean, we have evidence that that needs to be done. Um, so there you go. By, uh, what's this name? But. By eights, by eights, MC. Gosh, I can't. <laughs> by Yadis Mako. Enjoy your show. Recently got to go visit Kids Grave in Sumner from Virginia. Keep it rolling. Thank you, BY. I'm going to just call you that because uh, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce the name, but uh, glad you got here. Uh, glad you got to go. I'm going to Sumner next week um, to uh, give you a tour of the cemetery. Uh, and uh, we're going to give you not only a tour of on the ground, the cemetery, but uh, as you would see it on the map by Charles Dudrow made in 1906 when he exhumed all those soldiers' bodies. We're going to show you where the bodies were. We're going to show you what's changed in the meantime. Um, and we're going to show you where we think the kid, Bowdry, and uh, Folliard are buried. And it ain't three in a row, like three sticks of gum in a pack like they uh, have under that cement there it's definitely not that so we're going to be uh, uh there we go uh so the horseman is um is digging into the rifle thing horseman send me an email billy the kid rides again at gmail.com and uh, be happy to discuss it with you and i can at least uh, uh, relay what i know but uh, you've got some good questions and they they demand an answer so all right we'll be back monday night 7 p.m eastern time uh, yeah, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we may have a special guest with us. We'll review all the happenings in the world of Billy the Kid. Isn't it wild that <laughs> 140 some odd years later, there's still happenings of Billy the Kid? Like there's still stuff to talk about that's new or just newly discovered or people have kind of forgotten about or overlooked. I think that's very cool. Um, we'll give you the latest on the Billy Palooza big uh, Lincoln, New Mexico gathering of the faithful uh, next year in late September. And uh, we will, uh, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll have a good time. A couple more comments here. Dan AZ, any chance to tour the old Tunstall Ranch? Well, it's private. Um, I know somebody who knows the owners, so I can't say no, never. Uh, but I can tell you that it would take a little doing to get that. Um, yeah, but if, if it's possible, I would love to do it. I've never been on the Tunstall Ranch. Um, and Fred says, if you want some real eye-opening history, then go to Lincoln, walk the streets with Brandon Dixon, incredible walking tour, an excellent storyteller. And Brandon will be giving our tour on the Billy Palooza weekend next year. He's also going to be one of our expert speakers and pulling triple duty at the event. His band, 10 Mile Gin, is going to be opening up the Saturday night show, hopefully at the Benito Valley Brewery. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, leading the tour, 
singing and playing guitar, answering your questions the next day, the guy's going to need a, uh, he should get, uh, you know, extra pay for all of that. Uh, but yeah, it should be fun. So, okay, gang, uh, I, uh, I wanted to come in and give you the debunking on the photos and, uh, thank you for all those that helped out with that. Uh, I'm going to get on with my <laughs> Saturday night and I hope that you all do the same. And uh, I appreciate you joining me in this very impromptu live show. Tell your friend. Oh, by the way, uh, you could do me a huge favor or two huge favors. One is hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Two is hit the like button if you haven't. Uh, that would really be helpful. And uh, we hit the minimum for the shirts, the All Things Billy the Kid shirts. Um, uh, if you haven't seen them, I might be able to quickly show you before I go. Uh, so they will be ordered, but you have until Monday in order to get your order in. And so let me pull these up real quick. I know that's what she said. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Here, hang on one second. If you would like to get your own all the, all the, <laughs> all things, Billy, the kid shirts. There you go. Um, Custom artwork by Mel Hubna, and uh, you can order them. I will put the link in the comments below and also in the show notes. You can click. Uh, you do have to order by end of day Monday, the 26th. So you got essentially two more days to order, and then they'll be on their way. And uh, everybody will know that you're a supporter of the, uh, <laughs> the All Things Billy the Kid channel. And they'll also know by looking at the back that you are one of the uh, Billy the Kid faithful, no matter what you think about them. So... Thanks, everybody, so much. It has been a pleasure. I, I, it was surprising how many people came on board for this little uh, show, little mini show. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and we'll see you all on Monday night. Peace. Bye.